Eternal life is a free gift from God. Jesus died for you at Calvary. He is the way, the truth, the life, the door. If you believe in him, you shall be saved. Cause God's free gift to you is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. I would like you to turn your Bibles to Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1. This is the chapter, this is the book that we are teaching on and we have been teaching on it now for two weeks and we haven't got past the first few verses. This is a teaching session. It is not a preaching session. So when I'm teaching, I do not get as loud or as emotional as I do when I'm preaching. I would take my time and I would talk slowly because we are teaching, not preaching. For those of you that want, would like to get the notes so that you can join us on Sunday, you can send a message to my inbox on Facebook, those of you that are watching us on Facebook, and I will send you the notes before the service starts every Sunday. By, um, just give me your email address and I'll send it to you. Right. Let us read. We're going to read from the, the, the first 14 verses of Ephesians chapter 1. I am reading from the King James Version. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he have abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, according to the purpose of him who work of all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed was sealed with the Holy Spirit, I'll read, I'll read that again. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. As I said, we are going through the book of Ephesians. And we are taking our time with it, because you see, it's not how quick we read the Bible, but it's how much we have learned from the Bible. There are a lot of people that make a big thing about reading the Bible in a year. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, but the, the problem is, it's not how much you read. 
It's how much you've learned. You can read the Bible in a month. You can read the Bible in a week. If you want to spout enough hours. The question is, it's not how fast you read it. And I believe that everybody should read the Bible and read the whole of the Bible. But it's not how much you read, it's how much you've learned. But more than that, it's not only what you read, it's not only what you've learned, but it's what you do with what you learned that gets the job done. Learning how to drive ain't going to get you anywhere unless you put your, put your knowledge into practice and start driving. You can know all about holiness and still live in sin. You can know all about godliness and still live in unrighteousness. You can, live, you can know all about faithfulness and still live an unfaithful life. It's not how much you know, it's what you do with what you know. And I pray that those of you that are listening to me teach will do more than just be hearers of the word of God. It will be more than just head knowledge. But we will live by what we preach. And we will become better Christians as we walk in obedience to the word of God. God gave us his word that we might know him and that we might know his will and that we might know how to live. And God wants, God wants us not only to read the word, he wants us to live the word. And uh, he doesn't only want us to live the word, he doesn't only want us to study the word so that we can, so that we can make something of ourselves, which is good, but we need to study the word so we can help other people. As ministers, we are not there to lift up ourselves, we are there to lift up our congregation. A successful pastor is not one who makes something of himself. A successful pastor is one who makes something of others. It's what you achieve. A good mother, a good mother and a good father is one that brings up good children and sees those children succeed. I know this. Most parents are happy if their children get better jobs than they got. If their children are more successful than they are. But do you know, I know pastors that when they see their congregation, when they see a member of their congregation be preaching better than them, they get jealous. They want to stop them. God help us to be successful. God help us to help other people. Now in the first 14 verses of chapter 1, we see that in salvation, we are chosen by the Father. Ephesians 1, 3 and 6. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. Remember that, as we said in verse 4, I'll read that again, according as he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Notice that verse, he chose us. I get so, a lot of evangelists go around and say, you've got to choose Jesus. No. He chose us in him from before the foundation of the world. God has chosen a people unto himself. We are to go into all the world and preach the gospel, but only those that he has chosen will respond. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. That is why you can stand up in a meeting and preach the same gospel to everybody, and some will respond and others won't respond. The reason that they have responded is because those that are chosen, we are chosen in him from before the foundation of the world. I hear some, some preachers say, seek the Lord. But the Bible says there are none that seek after him, no, not one. The Bible says that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. I hear some people say, I found the Lord. No, you didn't. 
You didn't find the Lord. He weren't lost. He found you. He found you. Okay, so we are chosen by the Father. We are redeemed by the Son. Ephesians 1, 7-12. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. So we see that we are redeemed by the Son, and then in verse 13 and 14, we see that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. So we can see that in salvation, the whole of the Trinity is active. The whole of the Trinity is involved in our salvation. We are chosen by the Father. We are redeemed by the Son. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. This week we're going to look at these three points. Chosen by the Father. Now I am not going to um, go into that too much. Because I spoke on that last week. We are chosen by the Father. He does the choosing. God has chosen a people unto himself from before the foundation of the world. And if you want to know more on that, if you want to know more on that, then listen to last week's message. It's available on YouTube, or it will be, I think. It isn't yet. We are redeemed in the sun. We are redeemed in the sun. The word redemption means one, I call I'm 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 actually quoting from the Encarta World Dictionary here. The word redemption means improving something. The saving or improving of something that has declined into a past state. And that is what we were. Man was made in the image of God. Man was made sinless. But man has got into a poor state. But Jesus didn't come to get us back to a state we were in before the fall. He came to get us into a better state. If he came to get us into the state we were before we fall, we'd probably end up falling again. God has done something better in salvation. I've got in your notes it says... Improving the saving of something or something that has declined in a poor state. However, the sinner is not so much in a poor state, he is he or she is dead in a hopeless state. So you see, when we talk about the sinner, we're not saying he's in a poor state. He's not in a poor state, he's in a dead state. The Bible says we are dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2, 1. And ye have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were, not, we were not in a poor state, in need of improving. We were in a dead state, alienated from God. Ephesians 2, 1, it says, And you were dead in trespasses and sins. Another translation, because in the King James Version it says, you, you have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. But that, if, you, if you're looking at the King James Version, it, have been quickened is in italics, which means it wasn't there in the original. Because all it says in the original is, and you were dead in trespasses and sins. A sinner is not only dead to sin, but in his dead state, in his dead spiritual state, he is a slave to sin. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, everyone who committeth sin is a slave to sin. That's from the ESV version. They're a slave to sin. Now, can a slave suddenly decide he don't want to be a slave no more? 